Happy Earth Day. It's Sandy Allnock, and I am going to be drawing a dream that I had recently that will not leave me alone. So I'm going to put it on paper. As I was pondering what to do for my Earth Day drawing, I had a dream one night and I couldn't get it out of my head. So it ended up on paper. This is one of those things that's just going to sit in a drawer because it's just a weird drawing. But you might learn some things from it about drawing with Copic markers on drawing paper. This is a paper called Angre, I N G R E S. And it is a drawing paper. It's got a lot of tooth, a lot of texture to it. Very lightweight paper. And it's meant for pencil. But the reason that I chose this was because I wanted to do some Copic marker work and then go over it with pencil and pit pastel because I had some ideas for the finishing of the drawing that need to be on top. And I wanted them to have that pencil look because that's that was going to achieve the effect that I wanted. But boy, did I have trouble with the Copic portions because I was trying to get the Copic to be a color and the colors just weren't working. This is like an E04 and it came out just weird because it's on tan paper. It's a toned paper. Now the toned paper can be a really good thing because then when you put white highlights on a toned paper, they really pop. And that helps to develop some of that, that realism. If a snail in this situation could be real. I'm not really trying for realism, but nonetheless, if you're trying to make something that has a really nice pop highlight, consider some toned paper because that'll help you to do that. If you're doing the Copic, just do it first because Copic on top of pencil gets kind of weird and gunky. So you want to do the Copic first. Now for the shell, what's in the shell, the payload, when I was in my dream, I was a snail I was in the desert, on the moon, on Mars. I'm not sure where I was, but it was very dry. Snails don't like it very dry. But my payload inside my shell in the dream was carrying seedlings. I was carrying new life to try to save something from planet Earth. I don't know how I got to wherever it was that I ended up. That part of the dream like didn't stick in my head, but nonetheless... I'm, I put the little terrarium-like plants into the shell. Now, I did do some research on snails, and I found out that their shells are not empty. They don't just carry a big old empty thing on their back so they can crawl into it when they want to go to bed, which is what I thought when I was a little kid. I had a totally wrong impression. But snails make their own shells. They actually build it up with calcium and stuff, and it covers their organs. All of their body organs are inside. So the stuff that sticks out is basically a big foot and the foot is what navigates them. They just kind of like inch along. You've seen them do that. So this whole thing in reality is not real because they don't have a big empty shell and they certainly don't have one that's glass, but nonetheless, there you go. So the terrarium, I also had to like figure out, I don't know anything about terrariums. I think I had a terrarium when I was a little kid. But I put sand at the bottom. I did some Copic marker along the bottom going from darker to lighter and then did white pencil on top of it. Again, white pencil on top because putting marker on, on top of the pencil is going to just get weird. Then I added the soil on top of that so that my payload has something to grow in my little seedlings. And I just used a couple different browns. And again, I was messing around with colors because on tan paper, everything comes out weird. I've said before, if you're going to use your Copic markers on a particular colored paper on a regular basis, I recommend printing a color chart, like my hex chart, onto the colored paper so that you can swatch all your colors and know what they look like. Because the colors I had to use in the snail were actually pinks, which is very weird to have to make things out of pinks, but nonetheless. Next step was going to be to add the background because I had to add the moon, the Mars, the desert, the whatever it is. So I used some frisket film, which is sticky back film, to cover up the shell and part of the snail itself. Just cutting that with a knife, pulling away the excess so that I could do some Copic airbrush in the background. 
because this is going to be tone on tone. The color is just going to sit on top of the surface, but I'll be able to work into that a little bit and have some color in the background for sand dunes, whatever it's going to be in the background. And then I cut through on the inside, leaving the plants masked and leaving an outline around the shell itself. So when I peeled it off, I had the inner area that I could do some lighter airbrushing. The same kind of thing that I did in the background, but just doing it on the inside section so that I could have that outline around the outside edge and the color inside would also be lighter. Then it came time to figuring out what to do with the sand dunes. And I tested out some colors by just making some details on the shell itself and figured out that an E30, E30 is a really light color and it's going to get lighter, but this is what it looks like when it goes on wet. So when you're using anything on colored paper, you're going to see the moisture. The moisture is always there when you use white paper, you just don't see it. So next up, I used a lighter color than that, an E quadruple zero. Yes, this is quadruple zero. It looks really dark because it's wet. But since I still had the mask going across the plants, I could go right across them in order to add a little hint at the sand dunes in that section. Checked it all to make sure I got all the pieces of frisket film off of it. And by the way, I have a big roll of frisket film that I bought when it was on sale at a store that was going out of business. And I don't know how I'll ever use it, but they do make smaller packs of it. So I'll put links to both of those in the doobly-doo. It is really good sticky back stuff if you do a lot of masking and you can see through it, which is nice. So there's that. So next I used a pit pastel pencil to add the glassine look on the shell itself. So it would look like a clear glass shell. And I wanted it to look like there were maybe clouds in the sky that were reflecting onto the shell. And this was why I wanted to use this paper because pit pastel pencil is not going to work well on the papers I normally use for my Copic marker. But I thought I could make the Copic marker perhaps work on the drawing paper and then get the best of both worlds doing the Copic drawing plus the pit pastel and the regular Prismacolor pencil that I used in the some of the smaller details. And just adding in some kind of shine on the glass. I had no idea where to put it. I looked online to see if there were any such thing as clear glass shells. And there are people who have made like a block that they've carved into somehow the shape of a shell, but that doesn't really show you how to make it transparent. So I was guessing. I was totally making it up. And that's how it goes sometimes, just making stuff up. And there I tried to make the mistake of going over the pencil with the marker. Not the best idea. Should have done that. Line work beforehand, but you know, this is one of those crazy drawings that's just for my drawer of crazy drawings. It's not really for anything else except for maybe Earth Day. Maybe let's take care of the planet so I do not have to go to Mars with a shell on my back. Because even though in the dream I was happy to save the planet, it would kind of be nice not to have that weight on my shoulders. So there you go. In case you missed it, earlier this week in my last video, I showed you three different ways to make tulip wreaths in three different mediums. Copic marker, colored pencil, and in watercolor. So you can check that video out and there's also a new colored pencil class where you can learn how to color five different floral images in pencils and go make something beautiful because it's Earth Day weekend so you can celebrate all weekend long. I will talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and I will see you Monday.